Hello. I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. I bless God for this day. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. And I'm told you why I love Fridays. You spend this weekend meditating. Listen to the message from Monday to Friday. Listen to it again and again and again. And let it affect your reasoning. Get your mind renewed. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we bless you. Lord, your wisdom is all that suits our hearts. And we receive it from you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I remember yesterday I stopped at when, when I was telling you about Abraham and what the Lord told me. The Lord said he came personally to teach Abraham. The whole essence of the meeting between Melchizedek and Abraham was because of tithing. So how do you know? Oh, yes. You know, we, you just read something in the Bible. You don't go before the Lord. You don't pray about it. You don't ask the Lord to explain. Lord, what happened here? I just read he met Melchizedek. Melchizedek came with bread and wine. And then he, he, Abraham gave him a tithe of all. And I say, blessed be Abraham, the, uh, blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. And, and he blessed him. And that was all. When you read something like that, if you're wise, that's what God is looking at. He's looking for people who understand. So you read something like that, say, Lord, I don't get. What was the essence of this meeting? But you find Abraham saying before the king of Sodom. When he met him. And the king of Sodom said, Oh, Abraham, thank you so much. You've so helped us. You know what? Take all the goods. Just give us our wives and our children. And Abraham said, I have sworn before the Lord Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take even a shoelace from you, lest you say you have made Abraham rich. Okay. Where did Abraham swear before the Lord? See, you don't know. Abraham swore before the Lord when he met Melchizedek. Now, Melchizedek was the Lord. Now, people argue this, but it's the truth. You, you want to think Melchizedek is one king that lived in 50 BC or 50 uh, whatever, or 500 BC. Come on now, just think a little. Well, God, you remember the Bible said Jesus was a priest after the order of Melchizedek. You now want to think that God, now it was God who ordained the Aaronic priesthood. He made Aaron a priest. So from that, he ordained the Aaronic priesthood. And now God comes to Jesus and says, you are a king after the order of Melchizedek. And, and who is Melchizedek? One king that existed in a place called Jerusalem. I don't know where those people are getting all those knowledge from. Not from the Lord, definitely. Praise God. Not from the Lord. Melchizedek was the Lord that appeared to Abraham. He had a transaction with Abraham. And he told Abraham, how to tithe, why he should tithe. And he told him, bring. See, when you get things like this, the first thing you must do is to honor the Lord with your tithe. He said, how do I do it? He told Abraham, take out 10% of it and bring. And Abraham took 10% of it and says, okay. So, so, so what did he do? Did he take it to heaven? No, he didn't take it to heaven. He told Abraham what to do with it. Go read your Bible very well. He told Abraham what to do with it. He said, look, take out those portions and let your servants, your servants eat it. Said, okay, I'll do that. Now take out those portions and give it to so and so person. Oh, but why? Oh, they're your neighbors. They believe that peace with you. Okay, so give to them. Okay, I'll do that. All right, sir. And then he said, now one more thing. He said, what? I don't want you to touch any of the rest. Give it back to the king of Sodom. But, but, but it's mine. I got it as a spoil from the war. Yes, I know. But you know why? I'm so going to bless you that I don't want that king to think he made you rich. Oh, okay. Hmm. 
okay, I'm going to try. No, 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 I don't want you to try. Abraham, yes, sir. Lift up your hands to me. And Abraham did. And I wanted to swear before me. Swear? Yeah, I wanted to swear before me. Okay. Okay, he said, no, no, maybe he didn't use the word swear. Okay, I wanted to say before me. Okay. Lift up your hands. Say after me. I, I will not touch, will not touch even a shoelace, even a shoelace from these goods, from these goods. That's okay. I know you're going to keep your word. See, he made Abraham say it before him because he knew Abraham was going to keep his word. So when Abraham got to the king and said to him, I have sworn before the Lord Most High. See that? So who did he refer to as the Lord Most High? Melchizedek. He knew who he was dealing with. He knew exactly who he was dealing with. So the Lord was talking to me and said, I, I came down to teach Abraham tithing. And you think, or they think, how you wasn't talking to me now, or, and they think it is a lies thing. Never join people who speak against tithing. Now there, there's a lot of things wrong with the way people tithe. See, yes, I understand that. But the concept of tithing is a very deep spiritual thing. The things the Lord have taught me about tithing, I haven't even shared half of it publicly. Because some of it, you will say, oh. <laughs> but you see, now that's the place of understanding I sit and, 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 and I act and things are working. And people don't understand how. So when people say, oh, I'm going to shop here. And God is looking. Who understands? Who understands? If you have joined those people who say, oh, you're not supposed to tight. Hey, tightening is wrong. Tightening is the Old Testament. You need to repent before the Lord. You need to repent before him. Oh, Titan is not of the New Testament. Oh, did any of the disciples tithe? If Titan was of the New Testament, Jesus would have spoken about Titan. <laughs> there are many things Jesus did not talk about that we're dealing with today. So, yeah, really? Why do you think Jesus said to the disciples, there are many things I would have loved to teach you, but you cannot handle them now. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you. If he had taught them everything, he would have told us, see, and when the Holy Spirit comes, he would just be reminding you of everything. But he said, there are things I would love to teach you, but you cannot handle them. But when the Holy Spirit comes, why did he say you cannot handle them? He said, because the way truth works is line must be upon line. Precept must be upon precept. Now, Jesus spent only three and a half years with them. There are many things, many deep truths. But the truth about it is every truth the Holy Spirit teaches you, you he will trace it. He will trace it true and, and you will see the root of it you will just see the root of it and like whoa so that's the meaning of this yeah praise god so so i was talking about honor 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 husband honor your wife wife honor your husband when it comes to finances don't start or, or emotion. You know, say I'm the one. I'm the, I'm the one. I, I, I take the kids to school. I don't call them kids now, but I'm. You know how people talk. I take the kids to school. I I I, I do this and I do that and I do that. Ah, come on now. Father, thank you for the grace. Oh, I can move around. I can walk. I've got ideas for business, and it's working. Thank you. And the bills are being paid. Thank you, Lord. And I'm the one cleaning the house. Thank you, Lord. I'm the one, I'm the one doing all this stuff. I'm the one cooking the meals. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> it's more blessed to give than to receive. Now, you may have a husband who doesn't appreciate. It's not a problem. 
I'm telling you, it's not a problem. Why do I say it's not a problem? It can change. But it is your attitude that is going to change it. Listen, there is no way you will honor the Lord in Jesus. said, those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm not saying, oh no, you know, sometimes you go for marriage seminar. You say, eh, be doing it. And when you, whatever your husband say, just do it. Just do it. Now, they are teaching you sense knowledge. And he'll do it and he'll still be dealing with you. Things are not changing. But I'm teaching you spiritual knowledge. And that's why I'm coming from the place of honoring the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He said, ah, you know, oh, oh, oh. how come you're doing all these things and your husband is not doing anything? You know, there are people who, there, there are wives, for example, who, not because the husband does not have money to do it. The husband has money, but, but you know, they are just complacent. I mean, you know, there are men like that. You know, now the wife is thinking, oh, we have to. And then she, she goes ahead and she pays it. And then the man says, hey, but you have money now. I pay it now. Are you going to give me back? Why should I give you? What is your money for? And you, you, you know, talk like that. It's not a problem. I say, what's on it? The more blessed to give than to receive. So I'm doing the more blessed thing. He just tells your husband, don't worry. Very soon. You would see. <laughs> now, not because you're competing with him, but just, just like, it's the truth. And when he begins to see that your finances are going hair up and up, and, and his is just getting stagnant, he's going to, hey, my wife said it too. Huh? Uh -uh, uh -uh, I better wake up. Ah, no, 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 I better wake up. Ah, la, 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 I better wake up. Hey, honey, when is that bill due? I'm paying it. I'm paying it. Oh, you've learned wisdom now. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's life. That's the truth. Now, you're doing these things in the name of the Lord. That's what makes the difference. If you're doing it in your own name, get ready. Satan will attack you. There will be no defense. But if you're doing it in the name of the Lord. Now, what did Jesus say? Anyone who does anything because of me, because of me. What did he say? Anyone who leaves father, mother, house, you know, and land for my sake shall receive in this life a hundredfold, right? Now, what's he saying? You know, he also said, if you're not willing to leave mother and father because of me, you're not worthy of me. So now you are willing to do everything in his name. What are you saying? I'm worthy of him. Now, when he says we are worthy of him, what does that mean? I'm worthy to receive blessing from him. I'm worthy to receive protection from him. I'm worthy to, you understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm worthy, praise God. Why? Because I do all these things in his name. Now, when you do all these things in his name, you will never get tired. It doesn't matter what the other person does. You will never get tired. Listen to me. Don't ever grumble when you give. The pressure will come. But remember this, it is the Lord that we honor in all that we do. What did the Bible say? Whatsoever you do in words and in deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Is that not what he said? Now what does that mean? Do it in the name of Do it as unto the Lord. That's actually what he says. Do it as unto the Lord. So you're paying those school fees. You know what it says? Do it like God commanded you to pay the school fees. You're paying that house rent. Do it like God commanded you to pay the house rent. So Lord, I'm just obeying you, you know, because the house rent needs to be paid. And, and we're not going to, oh, so I'm doing it in the name of Jesus. Guess what's going to happen? God, the God I know will reward you. And let me tell you the truth. When you keep enjoying his reward, and when he rewards you, you will know that it's because of this that this came. Now, when you keep enjoying that, you won't have time to be sorrowing and be telling yourself, I wish you, I, 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 I. you won't have time for all that. And your marriage will be beautiful. Your mar you will enjoy your marriage. And, and life is easy for those who pay attention to understanding. Now, let's go back to, 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 to Psalm 14 what we're reading where he says the lord verse 2 psalm 14 and verse 2 the lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand who seek him now what i've shared with you this whole week is how to seek god and how to understand him if you set your heart to this then you'll be favored by god because he will find you as the one he's looking for praise god 
Have the best weekend ever. And I pray for you that as you walk in the light of this truth, miracles will happen in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.